Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Cheryl Wood, who is over in Washington, D.C., over the other side of the country or that way, whichever. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Cheryl? I'm phenomenal, John. Thanks for having me today. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Dr. Cheryl Wood is an international motivational speaker, best-selling author, master speaker, development coach for women, and committed to empowering and equipping women with the tools to courageously share their unique voice, their story, and their subject matter expertise. And what we're going to talk about today is developing obstinate persistence to thrive in business. Okay, so let's get straight into it. I love I loved that term, obstinate persistence. So um, why don't you explain the term first and then we'll get into it. Yeah, so uh, when you break the words apart and you define what obstinate means, obstinate is to have a stubborn refusal to change a course of action. And persistence or to persist is a continuance in a course of action despite difficulty or delay or despite opposition or failure. So my encouragement to people is when you are pursuing your big dream or that business that you're trying to produce or launch, you've got to have stubborn persistence, a stubborn continuance of one course of action until you get exactly what you desire and manifest everything that you've been dreaming about and journaling about and vision boarding about. You have to stay the course. There, there is no option. There should be no option to quit or abandon course. Yeah, no, I, I love that because um, let's face it, I mean, we're fantastic at giving ourselves out clauses or reasons, external reasons why we couldn't pursue something. Or the other part is, let's face it, whenever you start embark on a journey, there's always a rough patch at some stage that is discouraging. And that's the part you kind of got to work through. Absolutely. it's all. No one is ever going to go through a journey to any level of success without challenges, setbacks, obstacles, roadblocks. And we've got to have that spirit of, again, stubbornness like okay i got knocked down but i'm going to get back up and of course that requires some mindset work and that requires our ability to work out our what i call our resilience muscle or our bounce back muscle um, and some other things but at a minimum if you come into the journey with the idea that no matter what i'm going to stick with this you know whatever you focus on is the thing that grows so if you have that as your mindset from the start and your thought process that I get that this is going to be hard. I get that this is going to have challenges, but I'm not going anywhere. There, I, there's nothing for me to go back to. Then I think that is the thing that's going to expand. That spirit within you is going to expand. Yeah. And, and what's interesting about it is, um, I totally agree with you, but what's interesting about this is it's almost counterculture today because we live in this world where everything is supposed to be easy and it's <laughs> short attention spans and instant gratification. So like, actually working hard at something, sticking at it for a long period of time, going through the rough times and all that. As I said, it's almost a, it's almost a counterculture idea. Yeah, it's like people are, here's what I believe, people are creating that as a perception. People are giving you the perception on social media that, oh, it's quick and it's easy. And it's, you know, put in the microwave and bam, 30 seconds later, it's ready. And it just isn't realistic, um, which is why I like to teach my clients, look, let's, let's peel back the layers of this. Let's pull back the black curtain and let me show you what it really takes. And I bring, bring them into my world and I show them what I go through on a daily basis to create success, whatever that is for you, because it's a relative term, but to mm -hmm. get to where I am from where I was, which was, you know, 10, 11 years ago, I was going to a corporate job every day as a legal secretary in a cubicle. I didn't even know what the weather was like when I came outside because I didn't even have a window. <laughs> <laughs> and to be here, fast forward, where I'm running this million dollar enterprise, I'm speaking all over the world Oh, believe me, I didn't just blink my eyes and wake up to this reality. I don't care what snapshot people post on social media. They're giving you just that, a snapshot. It's a little small portion of the full journey, which I think is just, it's so unfortunate for the generation that's coming up now. I, I have three kids. I have a 14-year-old, 15-year-old, and 18-year-old. And I'm just like, God, they just, you know, I try to show them what it really takes. I'm like, do you see how many calls mommy does a day? Do you see how right. long I'm in my office? podcasting or doing interviews or teaching and training. Sometimes I'm on calls training until 11 o'clock at night because you guys have gotten used to a certain level of living. And if we <laughs> want to continue that, <laughs> I've got to keep working. This is the yeah. work that's required. So I just, I, I, I do, I understand that we're in that space where people make things, you know, it's creating a perception, 
do I love that? No, because I think it, it's a false, it's a false reality for people. And then they get in and it doesn't happen overnight for them and they get discouraged. Yeah, no, I, I, I absolutely, absolutely agree. And and it's good to, you know, that you're modeling because I think at the end of the day, it's all about modeling behavior, because yeah. I, I believe actually there's one you can teach people most things. One thing you can't teach people is hard work that has yeah. to come. And that comes from your know, modeling behavior like you are for your kids and that. And um, but so the other part. So how do you help when you work with people? How do you help with that mindset to, to changing that mindset to, OK, I'm going to be resilient? Uh, because, I mean, I think pe most people are pretty resilient, but they don't actually realize they are. <laughs> I think a lot of it is uh, your surroundings, your environment. Are you around other people who have a similar mindset or a mindset that you want to develop, right? So making sure that the community that you are in, they are people who are consistently working on themselves. There's a quote that I live by that says, the thing that is not growing is dying. Mm. So I always want to be on the side of growth and development. And that means sometimes I've got to be in spaces where maybe I'm not familiar with this, this level of thinking that I want, but when I see it modeled, as you just mentioned, it at least creates a level of curiosity within me where I want to explore it more. So maybe I don't know it yet, but when I see it modeled, I'm like, wow, she just had that epic failure or he just got knocked down massively and he's back. He came back for more or she came back for more. That does something to the human spirit. Um, so I think it's a combination of that, the community, and also you working on you and upgrading your internal dialogue. Because all of us know, most of us know, that the more you tell yourself something, the more your mind subconsciously is going to believe it. So if you don't have a spirit of resilience and bouncing back, it's your job to work on it by what you say to yourself every single day. And I mean multiple times a day, not once, not twice. And that means you've got to unplug from what you're telling yourself right now, which might be toxic. It might be, oh, well, mm -hmm. why? I knew this wasn't going to work. Why should I try again? It's just going to fail again. That might be your current thinking. So once you unplug from that, the question is, what do I plug into? So if you unplug a cord from a socket, you got to find, if you still want that light, you got to plug into a new socket. So what are you plugging into? What are you reading? What are you listening to? What are you filling yourself with and fueling yourself with so that you can start to at least put yourself on a path of a new direction for your thinking? Yeah, no, there's so, so many, there's so many great things you mentioned there that I just want to come back on. But uh, absolutely about uh, what are you what are you inputting into yourself? I think that's such a critical piece. Be, I mean, I often say, OK, if you get up in the morning, wake up in the morning, first thing you do is grab your phone, you check, you know, the news sites or you <laughs> check, you know, social media. Yeah, let's face it. News is designed to provoke you not to inform you anymore. It doesn't matter where you sit on this on this political spectrum. As you said, social media snapshots in time so you can get into that whole comparison culture and go, oh, look, look, at, look at Dr. Cheryl. She's standing beside a Lamborghini. Wow, she must be doing really well. Yeah, well, she just happened to take a picture beside one. But now I'm all bent out of shape. My whole day's ruined. And I think that's it. I mean, we hear so much about, uh, you know, filling your body with healthy, healthy food and everything. We don't hear enough about filling your body with healthy thoughts. Yes. Oh, you just... I you stated that so perfectly. All I can say is amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The other thing that you, I, I, I wanted to pick up on again, and I think this is a tough, a really, really tough thing for, for, for everybody. And that's what you said about the people you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go on a journey like this, like what we're talking about, you want to focus on success, you want to go on your success journey, uh, you do have to examine the people around you, just like, as we said, about going on to, you know, maybe you want to, stay off of social media a little more or whatever. You also need to look at the people around you. And that's really tough. That's very, very tough because sometimes the people around you can be very toxic uh, because they, they haven't worked on their own mindset. Yeah. And so they might just be used to saying things that are more negative than positive, that are more discouraging than encouraging. And it might not even be that they're trying to intentionally do it. They just haven't reprogrammed their own thinking. And so the things that they might articulate out of their mouth might not be the things that are really uplifting you and building you up and encouraging you to persist. So it's your job to either find or create the community that you desire that can pour into you. My mother always told me, Cheryl, always go where you're celebrated, not tolerated. Go into spaces where people are cheering for you. They're rooting for you. They're reminding you of your greatness when you forget and you fall back into that space of imposter syndrome or fear and doubt and inadequacy and all the stuff we go through as we're on this journey of becoming someone new. 
uh, you need to be around people who are in a space of celebrating you, encouraging, uplifting you, reminding you to elevate, reminding you not to shrink back and dim your light to who you used to be because you're no longer that person. And here's the reality. Sometimes that's going to require you investing in that type of community. You got to mm -hmm. invest sometimes for the access that you want to get to those people and in those spaces where you're like, when I come into this space, oh, the energy sets my soul on fire. And I, I do that for, I model that for my clients. I'm always investing in the communities that I am a part of. Why? Because I am worth every investment that I make in the person I'm becoming and in the things that I'm going to accomplish in the world. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And by the way, I love that. I'm going to, I'm going to borrow your mother's phrase. I love that. Go where, yes. what, did you say go where you're celebrated, not tolerated? That's, not tolerated. that's, that's so powerful. And, and the other part too is part of this is obviously, you know, seeking out the right people to be around you. But also, I'm a big advocate for the coach, right? Go get yourself a coach because right. there's somebody external to you who just has your success in mind. They have no other agenda and they just want to help you. And I think particularly now, I think we really, really, the time, I really think the time for coaches is is upon us, right? I think it's it's always been there, but I think now the maybe there is a greater appetite. Absolutely. And if you, if you look at anybody successful in any industry, whether it's sports, entertainment, whatever it might be, they always have a coach. There's always someone that's helping them strategically create new plays or reinforcing to them, you got this, you can do it because maybe they shot the ball and it didn't, they missed, right? So there should always be someone who is cheering for you, but they're also holding you accountable. They're reminding you of your greatness and they're helping you to create strategic plays so that you can get to a new level. So yeah, the coaching is critical. I always, I, and I have multiple coaches, it's not just one because different coaches add different value to my life. And I understand that this person brings this into my life and that person brings this level of value. So I don't, you know, I don't opt out of as much value as I possibly can get through the investment in myself. And like I said, I'm always, I'm worth every investment that I make in myself. And, and I also think about this energy is contagious. Mm -hmm. So if you are under the tutelage of the right coach, who is the right fit for you, then they will know exactly what energy to bring so that you are playing at your highest capacity in everything that you do in this in this thing called life and business and entrepreneurship and success. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. That's why I, to I would really encourage people to check it and check out um, Dr. Cheryl Wood here as well, because I think uh, coaching is, is so important because as you said, it's developing that obstinate mindset where you're going to stick with something. I mean, that is so hard kind of to, to do on your own. Like you said, I mean, you're a 10 year overnight success. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> 10 year overnight success. Yes. <laughs> but that's the thing is, I mean, people, uh, and I guess here's the other thing, um, Sherilyn, tell me how you deal with this with your, um, your clients. So we often set a goal or say, okay, this is what we want. Right. And, and, and I'm all for, you know, make it as audacious as you want it to be. But then sometimes we become paralyzed by it because it seems so far away. So it's that balance of how do you how do you feel like you're making progress towards that goal without sort of just focusing on that distant thing and sort of going, oh, I'm nowhere near this. Yeah, um, I always encourage my clients to create goals that stretch you, not stress you. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's so big and we're, you know, we've all heard the saying, like, you got to eat the elephant. I don't know why they, who came up with that? But anyway, it's kind of weird, yeah, exactly. but you chew yeah. it one bite at a time, right? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's exactly. breaking the big dream, the big goal down into bite-sized chunks. Okay. I'm not going to be, even for me, this is, you know, 10, 11 years into the journey. And now I am in the dream. I'm living in the dream that I thought about, I journaled about almost 12 years ago. But it was what's going to get me closer there in years one through 11 so that I could be here in chapter 12 saying, hey, this is the life that I'm living and this is the reality that I've created for myself. So it was the little things. It's OK, I got to show up and I got to go to networking events. I got to get on social media because I need to be visible. I also need to be credible, which means I need to not only serve my clients, but over deliver for every client that I get to serve. It's the little things that I can do step by step, putting one foot in front of the other that will ultimately get me to the big dream. And so if you pull back from the big dream that just seems like, oh my God, it's never gonna happen. And you say, okay, that's a little ways off. I'm gonna have to work for that. To become Dr. Cheryl Wood, the international motivational speaker, a two-time TEDx speaker, an 18-time bestselling author, hmm, that's gonna take me some time. Okay, what are the things that I can do in the process, in the interim, 
that ultimately will create for me this amazing portfolio that will design that person. And those are the steps that you take so that again, you're stretching yourself but not stressing yourself. Yeah, no, no, I love that. And sometimes instead of always just looking at the, you know, the goal in the distance is just take a quick glance back and see how far you've actually come. See how far you've come. Yeah. yeah. And then, and my thought, you know what, my, my thought, John, is always every single day that I have life and breath in my body, I just want it to matter. I, I want it to matter. And I want it to be bigger than me. I want my life to be bigger than me. So at the end of every night, I ask myself before I close my eyes and lay my head on my pillow, are you, are you satisfied with what you've done today? Did you make an impact on somebody else's life other than your own today? And if for any reason you didn't open your eyes tomorrow, would you feel like you would be able to say, job well done, Cheryl? And as long as I can acknowledge that at the end of every night, job well done. You poured out your gifts, you served others, you stuck with it, you got knocked down, but you got back up. You were a model for someone else. You led other people into their greatness. Great job. And hopefully we'll get an opportunity to do it again tomorrow. That's how I live my life. Yeah, no, that that that's fantastic, and I think the fact you know your your outward um, focus, you know what what impact did I make on on other people? Because uh, as we mentioned earlier, you mentioned earlier about you know self talk, and there's something like eighty seven percent or seventy nine percent of our daily self talk is negative or something like that. I read in Psychology Today at one stage. Uh, but to your point, when you start to say, what impact am I having on other people? It becomes a little less. I mean, you can silence that chatter a little bit because you're not so self focused. Yes. Yeah. Do look, anytime you're feeling bad or down about something that's going on with you, try doing something for somebody else. I promise you instantly. You're like, okay, well, it's not as bad as I thought. <laughs> so take the focus <laughs> off of you and make your life bigger than you. There is always someone who is going through it tougher than you. There's always somebody who got, you know, a bigger disappointment or discouragement than you did. And when you start focusing less on you and more on other people, and how do I help elevate and up level and empower other people out of their mess, your mess becomes a little less significant. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree with you. I think that <clears throat> that's so, and and obviously you can carry that through then because because if you have a servant mindset, then when it comes to to serving your customers and supporting them, it, it all it all just flows from there. Yeah, absolutely. And and you gotta expect that you're gonna have some tough times too because. If you don't have any tough times, you really have nothing to talk to your clients about, <laughs> right? Like, how do I encourage you? How do I help you to get up? And I've never been through anything. So if, I've, if, I, if I haven't been through anything, I can't help you to get back up from anything. So we've got to also look at, you know, our per perception of the challenges that we go through. We just got to shift the lens a little bit and look at it a little bit different and almost be thankful for the hard stuff because it makes us that much more valuable for the people that we are called to serve. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think you, I think we have to be thankful for every experience we have, uh, you know, and the hard and the hard ones are some of, as we know, some of our greatest teachers are the people where we probably dislike the most from how they did everything <laughs> on whatever the situation was. But if you look back and then you say, well, actually, hang on, I learned a lot from that experience. So uh, inadvertently, they were one of my best teachers. Yes, absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, Cheryl, this has been fantastic. All of Cheryl's information is going to be below this video so you can uh, so you can contact her. Um, but before we go, please do, Cheryl, tell people a little bit more about what you do. So my specialty is helping women and a few good men uh, to really <laughs> maximize the impact of their voice, their story, their experiences and their expert knowledge to maximize that so that it is touching lives globally and also to learn how to monetize it so that while you are impacting the lives of millions, you can also make millions. I love it, that's fantastic. And listen, as I said, I really would encourage you to go to CherylEmpowers.com. The links will be below here, but go, if you don't have a coach right now, go check it out because I really, really, uh, really would encourage you to consider getting coaching. It makes such a big difference to your life. I guarantee you, I've done it myself in the past. I've had coaches made a big, big difference. So anyway, thank you again, Cheryl. Thank you for watching and listening and I will see you all again soon. Thank you. Yeah.